Hey guys, what's up? Thank you so much for tuning in today here at Elevate Church. We know that today's message is gonna rock your world and elevate your life to the next level. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the message. We started this, uh, this I, won't, I won't say series, but we wanted to finish off the I Heart My House with talking about seasons. And uh, the reason I wanted to talk about that in a panel setting was because I wanted you to hear from different voices. Um, what was interesting uh, that on Sunday uh, people were in line with the message, but what what I what I heard a lot of of people say is I don't know what season I'm in, which I thought was very interesting that that most people don't know what season they're in, which tells me then that we have to be a little bit more tuned in with the Holy Spirit. I mean, that was the whole purpose. Jesus said, I don't leave you an orphan. I leave you a helper. And, and at some point, you have to get the personal revelation that I have to get, not get, I have to develop this relationship with the Holy Spirit. Because if I don't develop this relationship with the Holy Spirit, if all I know is information, like I hear a sermon and you hear good points on Holy Spirit, but you walk out and you're still not applying what you learned or or really taking the words of Jesus seriously when he said, I leave you a helper. And so you basically have a personal assistant. Someone who wants to give you direction. Someone that wants to counsel with you as you're wanting to make decisions. As you're, as you're wanting to make moves or whatever it is. I don't know what season you're in. Hopefully tonight I'm going to help you with that. So after hearing that, I thought to myself, okay, well... I probably want to hit that just a little bit tonight, and, uh, and I wrote a few things that I'm going to start with, if I can just fix my notes here. What if we were intuitive in our intention to interpret the season of our life? What if we were intuitive with the intention to interpret? I think most people are not intentional. I think most Christians live accidentally. You ask them, man, how is it that you've been walking with God for so many years? I don't know. I just go to church. Okay, that's an accident. I want to know what did you do with intention to get you out of that addiction? I want to know what did you do with intention to get you out of that situation or to get you into that blessing or to get you into that seat? What did you do with intention? For example, I get asked a lot, well, how did you get in ministry, Mauricio? And you know what? People are probably waiting for a deeper answer. I say, I always say this to them, I was faithful with intention. I was faithful with a little bit. I was faithful with a lot of it. I was faithful when nobody wanted to do it, including me. I was faithful when people were leaving. I was faithful when people were coming. I was faithful when we were lacking. I was faithful when we were blessed. I was faithful in every season of my life. When I was going through cancer, I was faithful in the hospital, praying for nurses. In whatever season... I can tell you that my intentionality throughout the 21 years of walking with Jesus, all I have committed myself to Jesus is be faithful. And that has brought me a lot of fruit. It's that simple. But I want to take us a little bit further than just be faithful. Let me just break it down a little bit. So think about it. Wouldn't you love to be so in tune with the Holy Spirit that, that you would know when to buy a home? When to invest, when to sell, uh, when to remove, when to embrace, when to release, when to step in, when to step out. I mean, what if we were so in tune that you already knew by the Spirit of God what your next step is going to be or how I'm going to shift seasons from where you're coming from, where I'm going to close the chapter to a book of my life in order for me to go to the next chapter and stop being stuck in chapter one when you really should be in chapter seven right now. And so all throughout the Bible and the Holy Scriptures, you have the Holy Spirit who was constantly speaking to people of God that were in tune with the Holy Spirit. Let me just take you to two verses quickly and then we're going to get into this message. You ready? Look at your and be like, wake up. Cool. Tom, don't check out. It's not deep. I preach very practical, but you can get lost. 
Acts 21 verse 4, look at this. It says, we sought out the disciples there and stayed with them seven days. Through the Spirit, they urged Paul not to go into Jerusalem. This verse right here, if you get into the full context of it, Paul was focused to go to Jerusalem. Like that was his intention. But by the Holy Spirit, the disciples got the 411 before Paul had to call 911 in Jerusalem and said to him, hey, listen, Paul, we know that by the Spirit of God that if you go to Jerusalem, they await you. They are going to ambush you and they're going to kill you. So the Holy Spirit will bring protection to you. Have you ever been driving and you know your exit's coming. It's, it's like only about a mile away and you drive past your exit. And you're just like, oh my, and you call yourself a dummy, how stupid, you idiot, what were you thinking, hello, where you're, and, and not realizing that just maybe the Spirit of God wanted to get you past that because he wanted to save you from something that could have hurt you. Do you know that God will do that for you in life by the Holy Spirit? Aren't you glad that when we're not that smart and intelligent, we have the Holy Spirit who is? Glory to Jesus. Let me, let me give you another verse. Look at this one. Acts chapter 20 um, says, I only know, this is the Apostle Paul. This is how in tune he was to the Holy Spirit in his seasons. He says, I only know that in every city, the Holy Spirit, what? Warns me. Who, I'm sorry, who warns him? Wouldn't it be awesome if the Holy Spirit would warn you ahead uh, before, before we hit the next recession and just said, hey, for the next three years, I want you to save. Wouldn't that be awesome? It's possible. You know, a true story. I remember when, um, before the, the recession that hit a few years ago, um, I, we had just bought a house, like maybe, I don't know, I think we were like three years in. Yeah, three years. I'm horrible with dates. My wife would probably correct me. But three years. I'm just going to say three years. And, um, and I just felt, man, in my spirit. But I couldn't tell her God told me. I'm very careful with the whole thing God told me thing. Uh, God does speak, but... You know, not audibly all the time. But I just felt impressed in my heart. I told him, like, you know what? I really feel, babe, I feel like we need to sell this house. And, uh, and she's like, no, I love my house. And, you know, oh, my God, God gave it to us. And, and you, know, you know that whole thing, ladies. And it's like, we fought for it. We prayed for it. Just because you prayed for something doesn't mean there's a, a shelf life to it. You know what I'm saying? And so I just felt the press. I'm like, you know what? I really feel. I, I couldn't tell. She's like, well, did God tell you? I'm like, well, no, God did not tell, tell me. But I do feel impressed that we got to sell this house. And we got to do it quick because I feel, I sense that this market is going to crash soon. And anyway, so she didn't want to do it, so I didn't do it. Well, guess what? The market crashed months later. I knew I just couldn't make that decision and I had to guard myself from not getting bitter because we could have walked away with probably like around two hundred and fifty, three hundred thousand dollars um in, in in just complete you know interest. And uh and I was I was I was upset for a moment but but that's okay. I say this to you because sometimes when you're not willing to stay in tune with God you can miss an opportunity. But aren't you glad that God can make them up too? Amen. God can make them up. And I feel like there are people here that you may have missed opportunities because you weren't intentional in interpreting the season you were in. And so here Paul says, hey, listen, the only thing I know is that the Holy Spirit is warning me that there is prison and hardships that I'm going to be, that I'll be, that'll be facing me. And so sometimes all we want to hear is all the good stuff, but sometimes God wants to tell you about some stuff that wants to that's going to happen that you may not be very happy about or excited about. But aren't you glad the, that the Holy Spirit can prepare your heart to deal, the, deal with the hardship? I, I believe that if more Christians would be more raw and real with, with their walk with God, they would realize that God is not only a blesser, but he also is an exposer of things that are going to probably hurt you for a season. But he'll strengthen you in order for you to endure that season. And that's what God wants to do. Now let me take you since the beginning. Now let's go back to the beginning. Genesis. Laying a foundation. Are you ready? Genesis 1, verses 14 and 15. Check this out. From the beginning, man, look at God. He says, then God said, let there be light bearers, sun, moon, stars. Sounds like seasons, right? 
He says, in the expanse of the heavens to separate the day from the night and let, and let them be what? Useful. Let them be what? Useful. So, so God wants every season to be divided from night and day in order for it to be useful to understand what season I'm in. And he says, in the expanse of the heavens to separate the day from the night and let them be useful for what? Signs, tokens of God's provident care. God is trying to give some people some signs tonight. Don't check out. You check out, you're going to walk out of here like the same person. There's some signs that God is giving you now, or there are some signs that God is going to bring you in the next few days, maybe the next month. And he says, and let them be useful for signs, tokens of God's provident care, and for marking seasons, days, years. And let them be what? Useful. There's that word again. And let them be what? Useful. As lights in the expanse of the heavens to provide light on the earth. And it was so just as he commanded. You know, it's so hard to, to accept the, 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 the seasons that we go through. I think we, are, we, we all love embracing the good seasons, right? When, man, when the family life is doing good, when, when the finances are doing awesome, you know, when the kids, you know what, are being righteous, uh, when, when, when everything is just flowing, right, all the ducks are in line. We love that stuff. But I think that we fail to understand that you will have seasons of dryness spiritually. You will have seasons of family issues, marital problems. You will have seasons of financial lack. You will have seasons of, of, of relational issues with friendships, with people that you've done life with. There's both seasons and it's, it's coming to that maturity. It's allowing God to develop the inner man, the spirit man to realize that we have both seasons and God made it very clear he says I want to make sure that I'm dividing night and day so that you understand that there's going to be some night hours but there's going to be some days that will come early in the morning and then joy comes back right but you got to understand the seasons if not you'll be the person that anytime you're in a bad season you know what you do you quit and you run you give up You push back. And I, I just, I feel, I sense that we're coming in a season in this world where God is like, he's looking for remnant people. He's looking for serious people that are ready and willing to embrace whatever season they're in and to just accept it. I think there's been too much of this whole, you know, God bless me, bless me, bless me, and that's all we want. But the remnant... The remnant are about to rise. What are the remnant? It's the people of the last days that are not going to compromise. It's the people that are going to say hell to the no. They're not going to let anything shake them, move them. They're going to stand firm in the faith no matter what they're facing. Stay with me, okay? So say this with me. Say, just as he commanded. We're going to talk about that. So that's what he's saying here. He's saying, so I want you to take all this I said in Genesis. And he's saying, so I want you to. Accept this just as I have commanded you. And so God wants us to divide the day from the night so that we can know what to do, when to do it, how to do it, where to do it. And if you don't know what season you're in, and I mean, think about it. God started seasons before any man on earth had a piece of pen or a piece of paper and a, and a pencil. Like God was already talking seasons before any man on earth. God was way ahead of social media. God was way ahead of computers. I mean, God was already talking about the calendar before any man started creating one. So you have to understand that God, God says, listen, I need you to know what season you're in. Because if you don't know what season you're in, it's going to be very difficult for you to ever determine what season I want to take you into. God needs you to know what season are you in. What season am I in? Am I in a season of, of growing up spiritually just a little bit more? Am I in a season of forgiving? 
Am I in a season of, of, of generosity? There's different seasons. Am I in a season of gathering? What kind of season am I in? Am I in a season of family where I have to strengthen the family right now? Because the family could be a little wackity whack whack, right? Could be a little cray cray. What season are you in? You have to identify what season am I in right now? In, because that will determine the destination of the next season God wants to shift you into. You have to know this right now. And I had to speak on this right now because I heard that on Sunday people are like, I don't know what season I'm in. That's a little scary. That's a little scary. Because that means that you're on cruise control. That means that you're just doing life and you're just letting life smack you, hit you. And it's like you're not realizing this is the season I'm in. So here, I love this, this verse because God thinks it's important for us to know the seasons. He wants us to know it. Where are you right now in this season? Because it's going to determine where you're going. You have to know your season. It's a season of shifting. I believe that we're in a season of great breakthrough. You know what, on Sunday, if you were here, how many were here on Sunday? You know what I'm telling you? What's, you know what season Elevate Church is in? Spring forth. <laughs> Elevate Church is in spring forth. There is so much crazy blessings happening right now at this church. It's ridiculous. So we better hold on to that season for a minute. Okay? Because every church also has its dry season. Every church. Every church has its exodus season too. <laughs> Where people just massively just, <laughs> they leave. It happens in every church. I don't care from the small church to the mega church. But it's understanding the season that we're in. Now watch this. So God wants to take every season, but he wants to make it glorious for you and I. Are you guys here with me tonight? Okay. I need you to get this because I don't want to just be that preacher that's just telling you, oh, God's going to bless you. God's going to die. And then you get hit and you're like, why is why did, he, why did he forget me? No, it's just the season you're in. Don't repeat a season. That's the challenge. Don't repeat the season. Some of us have been in winter for 10 years. We, we can't repeat seasons. Some of us were still repeating the same season of financial crisis. Some of us are still repeating the same season of family dysfunction. And, but, if you, but if you can just come to the place of knowing where you, what season you're in, then that will determine where I'm going next. you got to know where. It's like when, you know, I don't know if they do that anymore in the malls. That's probably when we were in the 80s, I guess. You remember you go to the mall and you want to find a store and you'd always go to the directory. And what's the first thing you look for? You are here. Okay, I'm here. This is where I start. you got to locate yourself, right, in order to find yourself. Okay, that's what God's saying with seasons. You need to locate yourself. Where are you? And because that determines whether or not you're going to go where God wants you. Okay, so I'm going to take the perfect example, Isaac. Uh, Genesis 26, verse 1 through 4. Let's start getting into some juice. Genesis 26, verses 1 through 4. Check this out. Isaac was in a season, and he had a guy by the name of uh, Abimelech who was... Uh, being somewhat of an issue. But it says, now there was a famine. Everybody say famine. famine. Come on, some of us, we have a specific famine right now you're going through. I, I don't think uh, many of us in this Western world really understand famine because when you think of famine, you think war and lack of food. That's, what you, that's, that's, re that's real famine. But it says here that now there was a famine in the land. Besides the previous famine in Abraham's time, so there's a separation like, well, uh, Isaac's famine wasn't like Abraham's famine. Know what season you're in. And so he says, and Isaac went to Abimelech, king of the Philistines in Gerar. And the Lord appeared to Isaac. Who appeared to Isaac? The Lord. Okay. Whatever famine you're in, the Lord is going to appear to you. And the Lord appeared to Isaac and he said to him, do not go down to Egypt. You know why? Because once famine hits, when, 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 when business isn't doing well, huh? when careers aren't accelerating, come on, when, when family life is not progressing, we go somewhere else. Yeah, 
you want to look. Why? Because I'd rather go somewhere else where it's better. But the Lord said to him, Isaac, you will not go to Egypt. Why? In Egypt, during the famine, Egypt had bread. Egypt had food. And why wouldn't you want to go to a place that already has food, provision? Why wouldn't you want to pick up, get your family up, and move them to a whole other location when there is bread in that place? It makes common natural sense to make moves when you're in famine. But in this story, in this context, when you, when you work with God, God doesn't work in our intelligence or our own wisdom or our own insight. God's saying, I want to lead you. I want to guide you in every season of your life. So he says to him, don't you dare go to Egypt. He says, live in the land where I tell you to live. That's hard for a lot of us to swallow. Because when things aren't working out, we don't want to live in the land where he tells us. That's like trying to forgive, forgive a boss that's always just like hammering you. And the easiest thing to do is quit and go find another job. But I wonder if God would tell you, no, I want you to stay there. And I want you to live in the land of the job I gave you. And he says, uh, stay in this land for a while. So there's seasons, right? He says, but I want you to stay here. You know, maybe right now that, that job that you dislike so much that you're just so sick of it. God's just like, hey, listen, I get you. But I need you there for a while. He says, stay there for a while. And I will be what? With you. And I will do what? Bless you. In other words, what famine are you facing right now? It doesn't have to be like, well, you know, we didn't get any food this week. No. What famine? What are you are you spiritually famished? Come on, are you are you are you famished in, in career? Are you famished in business? Are you famished in marriage? Are you fam where are you famished right now? And you're just wanting to just give up and just go to Egypt because it's easier to go to Egypt. And he says, No, where where I tell you to live, where I tell you to stay, I will bless you. And he says, for, for to you and your descendants, I will give all these lands and I will confirm the oath I swore to your father Abraham. I will make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and I will give them all these lands. And though or through your offspring, all nations on earth will be blessed is this speaking to someone yet <laughs> so check this out here's where it gets nasty look let's jump to verse 6 so Isaac stayed in Gerar do you know that if you were to look up the word Gerar in the uh, Hebrew it means a place to drag off forcibly or to chew up. Maybe you're living in a place that wants to chew you up and spit you out right now. Maybe that's how you feel. You feel like, man, I, I don't know how much longer I can handle this situation with my family. I don't know how much longer I can handle the situation with my relationships. I don't know how much longer I can stay in business. I don't know how much longer I can embrace this calling. I don't know how much longer. And God's saying, hey, listen. It doesn't matter how much you're chewed or how much they spit you out. I will bless you there. I will bless you there. And he says, it's the place, man, they're going to just drag you off forcibly. And it's also the place where they're going to chew you up. I mean, who wants to be in a place where you're going to be chewed and spit out? Who really wants to be in that place? It takes awesome obedience in the midst of, of a dry land, in the midst of a dry season, to be able to really take on God's word and say, okay, God, I really don't want to be in this marriage. I really don't want to be in this family. I really don't want to be in this job. I really don't want to be in this call. I really don't want to be with these people. But God is saying, stay there. Everybody preaches, leave. God's saying, stay. Oh, I know it's good. Thank you. Yeah, 
God's staying, God's saying, in your staying, I'll bless you. No matter how hard it gets. How could you stay when there is no rain? How can you stay when there is no food? How can you stay when everyone else is leaving? I'll tell you why. Because the Lord said, stay. I commanded you to stay. Egypt looked better, but God said, but I'm telling you, the land that is famished is the land I'm giving you. It's the land I'm prospering you. Um, I remember, do you guys remember when the whole tsunamis happened in Japan? And different parts of the world, India, Japan. Um, it was pretty vivid because in the news, I mean, how many watched the news when, when, when the, uh, the waves were coming in? I mean, it was live. And I'll never forget, it's, it's like, it's been an impression in my life ever since then. But I was watching the news and on, on one of the parts of, um, of the people, like, you know, there was these vehicles that were all driving and, and they came to this fork road, and this was live. I'm watching this live. And because it's an aerial shot, we can see that on the left, the waves are coming. And so everybody's going left. They are going into disaster. They had no idea. But everybody was following everybody. And then this one little dude on a motorcycle, little Asian guy, he gets to the fork, and he's like, and you can tell he's like contemplating, doesn't know what to do. And he goes, right. He's the only one that lived. You see, the problem with today's society is that we follow everyone but God. In other words, you choose the most popular road than the most unpopular road that God wants to bless you in. I'm sure some of you are feeling uncomfortable right now. This is good. But that's what I mean by, by we have to know what season am I in because you know what? It makes sense to go left. But God's saying, no, I need you to go right. No. Your season determines the wrong or right decision you're about to make. It determines right now. Your season determines the choice and the decision you're going to make. It will determine where you're going to go next in the season God's trying to bring you into. But you have to know how to interpret the season. You have to know where am I? Where am I? Come on, just close your eyes. Ask him, Lord, where am I? Where am I? Show me. Holy Spirit, speak to me. Where am I? Where am I? Where is my spiritual walk with you? Where is my spiritual fortitude? Man, where is my spiritual love for God? Where is my desire? Where am I? Because if you're not, then you're just cruising. you got to know where you are. You have to. And I'm, I'm like, I need, to, I need to make sure you get this tonight. For what? Why do I need to know this? Because that's the only time that God can do a supernatural work. Until you know where you are, God can't do nothing. It's hard for him. Not that he can't, it's that he can't cross your will. When you're standing with God, you have to know where you are. You're in the right place. You are. Stay faithful. I, I'm telling you, just stay faithful. You just stay. The storms will hit. The waves will roar. But stay. Stay. Don't let nothing move you. Don't let nothing shake you. You're already, you're already going into the river of, of what God wants. And it's, it may get rough, but he's with you. Don't quit. You know why? Because when you see something tangible that you're facing, it's so real that it does something in us and it literally gets us to to want to wanna make a decision out of the flesh instead of making a decision based on what the spirit wants you to do. Don't be flesh led, be spirit led. Because the flesh will never lead you to waters of refreshing. You have to know the season. You have to know the season. <laughs> what do you do when things come to a famine? What do you do? We don't understand famine in this world, honestly. 
in our Western world, we don't understand family. You don't quit because it's not producing. You don't give up because it's not progressing. Listen, sometimes in famine, nothing's working, but that doesn't mean that God's not working. You, you, you got to... You got to mature in that season. You see, it's that weather. It's that weathering season that begins to develop those faith muscles. And, and then all of a sudden, you're just like, okay, God, you're going to get me through this. I don't like what I feel. I don't like what I see. But, Father, I embrace this season I'm in right now because obviously you're going to do something with this season. I mean, if you, know, if you would just know the word of God, he says, uh, what the devil meant for bad, I will turn it around for your good. What if we really started getting a hold of those words in our seasons and saying, you know what, man, though a thousand may fall on my side and ten thousand more may fall on my right hand, it will not come near me. Like really grasping the word and, and being excited and, and not just letting ourselves, you know, quit because things aren't producing, things aren't growing. Come on, the grass is greener somewhere else, but let me tell you something, their bill is so much higher than yours right now. God was giving Isaac a command, stay here. God was giving Isaac a command, stay here. Well, how can a good God, how can he allow me to stay in famine? Because God is going to do something beautiful with that famished place. God says, man, I bring streams and deserts. You have to know that, man, when God, when God gets a hold of you, when you get a, a, a word from heaven and you stick through it, let me tell you something. God starts doing some amazing supernatural things. <laughs> Do you know that prior to Isaac, there's people in the Bible before this famine, there was always famines, that other people did opposite of what God told them and the price was their family? Literally. People of God, women of God, God never told them to leave and they left. And it would cause them three family member burials. And of course, God's grace is always on us. But I think that sometimes, and please don't, don't, don't take this so personal. Take it more as a, as a word, word in season. That sometimes our decisions can be devastating and it's not that God allowed it it's that we weren't in tune with his season and when God said stay we left and so what do we do we, we I love this song reckless love we got to come back to his love and say God forgive me help me <laughs> come on God is saying can you stay in that job in this season you stay with that family can you stay uh, with this this calling can you stay with this challenge I want you to stay Isaac he needs some more Isaacs in this hour Isaacs that are willing to obey God and stay and and realize that man it's going to get better and here's what happens look at this I love this as I'm closing he says this in Genesis 26 verse 12 through 13 a few verses down he says man uh, Isaac Isaac ended up staying everybody say he stayed he stayed. You're going to stay. You're going to stay. I'm not sure what, what, you're, what decision you're about to make, but stay. Because look, it says Isaac planted crops in that land. See, it's not just a matter of staying, it's a matter of sowing. When, when you're in famine, that's the best time to sow. When you don't sow, you'll stay in famine. You can't just say, I'm in famine and do nothing about it. No, I'm in famine and I'll do something while I'm in this famine. Do you know what? I remember there was times where I didn't have any money to, to this is when I first came to Christ. I had no money to tithe, man. I was just broke. I had no job. I mean, it was just hard. I had moments. Do you know what I would do? I would sow my time in God's house and serve. You sow during your famine. Well, look at, what, look at what Isaac, Isaac planted crops in what? In that land. Do you realize that in this time, his ground could not bear fruit? 
but do you know that he didn't, he didn't go ahead and accept the, 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 the geography or the agriculture, whatever uh, uh, system or systematic of whatever growth of, of crops. He planted. He planted, regardless, not, not knowing what he was going to get, but he just planted. He planted crops in that land, and in the same year, he reaped a hundredfold because the Lord blessed him. The man became rich. And his wealth continued to grow until he became very wealthy. How awesome is that? Wow. You know what most people do when famine? They hoard. God says, that's not how I operate in famine. Come on, that's when we sow into our family. That's when we sow into people. That's when we sow into relationships. That's when we sow into our job. Come on, right now, the reason you hate your job is because you stopped planting. You've been talking about the famine instead of planting in the land that God has given you. Plant. You will never, ever, ever, never, ever receive the hundredfold until you know how to plant and sow in times of if today's message impacted you in any way and you want to help us spread the gospel with a financial gift, text the number below and we know that someone's life will be changed the same way that yours was today.